But when you continue and look at that timeline in history, Rasulullah just finished the Hajj. He just finished it. After finishing it, coming back, he was leaving from Mecca, heading to Medina. A very interesting situation occurred here. Revelation was revealed. Ya ayyuhar Rasul. And we said Rasul, and Allah described him as Rasul here. You still have a message to give. Islam wasn't complete. And if you don't do it, then you failed in your mission. And the most deadly, dangerous line in the end. Ya Allah, are there kuffar in attendance? They just did hajj. Who is still there who has a dark heart inside of them? But they know that when they hear Rasulullah, see him and hear him raise the hand of a particular person, their kufr will be engulfed and they will try to conspire. Allah will not guide those people, the group of the kufr. There's a group of people in attendance, O Rasulullah. I will protect you from them. Wallah, I will protect you. Wallahu ya'simuka min al-nas. Inna Allah la yahdi al-qawm al-kafirin. Just do it. This is your final message. Islam is dependent on it. Because if you don't mention it, if you don't say it, you failed in your mission. What could it be? Rasulullah reached that oasis of Ghadir Khum, where it's a body of water. There are three reasons, my dear respected brothers and sisters, as to why Rasulullah, or actually why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala picked this area this land right here to make this announcement. Many questions arise. Why wasn't it announced during the Hajjatul Wada event? Why, why in this barren land? Why, why here? And why exactly in this particular place? How come you couldn't just wait to have gone to Medina? You know, Rasulullah two months later died. And so what's going on over here? The very interesting view in that, number one, it's an oasis, body of water so people can gather and kind of relax, more convenient for them. Number two, that area of Ghadir Khum is between Mecca and Medina. It is between Mecca and Medina, however, it's only a few kilometers north of Mecca. So it's a lot closer to, to Mecca than it is to Medina. That's a very strategic area for the tribes to part ways. If you're from Taqif, right there, then you go where you need to go. If you're from uh, Ta'if, then you go to where you need to go. If you're from Medina, you keep going north. If you, go, if you have to go back to Me Mecca, go back south. It's a very strategic area for the tribe to split. It's like that fork in the road. You know, right there is the area. So it's as if Rasulullah wanted to show, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to show, that since we're all gathered one last final time, I have this one announcement I need to make to you. There's a third opinion that geographically, the land of Khadir Khum, we had a few people go. Amongst them, Ayatollah Sayyid Munir al-Khabbaz, Sheikh Hassan bin Farhan al-Maliki, Saudi Sheikh, and Sheikh Muhammad al-Sanad, the uh, Marja in Najaf. They went to the land, this was years ago, and they recall the story for those of you that want to reference it. They say, we went one day to that land of where supposedly the event of Ghadir Khum occurred. We all attest that there is something super unique about this geographic area. What is it? There is a natural echo. That if you speak about a mile away, someone will still hear you. I find it interesting how Allah chose this piece of land to make Rasulullah, 124,000 companions, come here to make this announcement. It's as if He wants everyone to not miss this lesson. That, and for those, historically, that are ahead of us, Rasulullah said, call them back. And those that haven't reached the area, will wait for them to get here. What is this message, Ya Rasulullah? And if you're 120,000 people, you're not going to be walking on the same pace and traveling on the same level. Absolutely not. So he said, those that are ahead, bring them back. Those that haven't reached here, the area, we'll just wait for them to come here. Something must be very powerful, something must be very magnanimous, something must be very dangerous that will be announced just now. Rasulullah then said, I want everybody to gather the saddles and the carpets and what you could from material to pile them up onto a mount. He then ascended the mount. On top of that mount, he made this really beautiful fundamental line. 
he said something very powerful. Alastu awla bikum min anfusikum. The response was qalu bala. Do I not have a greater authority upon you than you do upon yourself? They said yes. And it's very interesting that this exact hadith is narrated in every single book of literature. You cannot deny this event. Why? 120,000 people witnessed it. No, he said this. No, he actually said that. 120,000 saw it. So there's no denying what he said. What they'll do is they'll come and change interpretations. No, no, Mawla means this. No, no, he actually meant that. Well, no, it was because there was a problem between Imam Ali and Khalid bin Walid in Yemen. So he wanted to calm them down by saying, hey, Ali's my friend, by the way. So don't, I'm going to bother you guys to make sure you stop right here in the heat. Bring all of them back. Wait for these guys. Allah says this is a very dangerous announcement just to let you know Ali's my friend. We already know that. We know way beyond, Ali's not just your friend. Ibn Amr Rasul, Nafs al Rasul, Zawj al Batul, whatever you, Ali is more than just a friend. Habib al Rasul, more than that. What, my friend? Allah. And if you look at the sources of the Shia, you look at Al Istibsar, Tahdib al Ahkam, Malay Hadru al Faqih, Al Kafi. This is all authentic. You look at the Sunni sources from our wonderful Sunni brothers and sisters. Ibn Majah, Abu Dawood, Nasa'i, Tirmidhi, Sahih Muslim, even Ibn Taymiyyah, the Shaykh of the Salafi school of thought, will accept this hadith. Ibn Qayyim Jawziyyah. The only one that doesn't accept it with the exception of Bukhari. I don't know what his problem was. He doesn't see it as authentic. He's the only one that doesn't accept it. In his Sahih, he doesn't accept it as Sahih. In his Tariq, Tariq Bukhari, he does recognize it, yes. But in his Sahih, I don't know why he doesn't see it as Sahih. But we, there's no... Allah, there's no denying the event. And it's accepted widely. But the difference is the interpretation. Mawla doesn't mean this. Oh, does it mean that? Oh, it was because he had a problem here. Let's look at it step by step and exactly we'll figure out what went on. Rasulullah said, Alastu awla bikum min anfusikum. Do I not have a greater authority upon you than you do upon yourself? What does that exactly mean? That if I tell you to do something and you don't do it, haram on you. There's a sin on you. If I told you to do something that you don't even like to do, you still have to do it whether you like it or not. I am awla bika min nafsik. I have a greater authority upon you, more than your own mother and father. I am your sila, the connection between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hence why salah is called salah, the root word sila, connection. There's a very funny phrase, if you want to talk, if you want Allah to talk to you, read the Quran. If you want to talk to Allah, pray to Him. Allah's phone number, 1-800-SALAH. And you will look at this phrase, Alastu awla bikum min anfusikum 120k, responded, qalu bala. Remember the sources, Sunni and Shia. Yes, they all said yes. At that moment, there's a very fundamental, significant thing that I want you all to pay attention to. We always begin it by saying this, Man kuntu mawla. It's wrong. فَمَنْ كُنْتُ مَوْلَى Why? Linguistically, in Arabic rhetoric and grammar, the fa indicates something as a continuation. You said something, right? Now you're continuing it. So when they say mawla means this, but he already gave you awla right here. As I have a greater authority upon you, yes, Arabic is a very ambiguous language. Synonymity exists in Arabic. One word literally has, can have a thousand meanings. Ain could mean eye, could mean kneecap, could mean city center, could mean gold, could mean many things, right? So what makes you say it doesn't mean just my friend? Because Rasulullah said, فَمَنْ كُنْتُ مَوْلَى And so whoever was, I was his mawla, أَلَسْتُ أَوْلَى بِكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ Highlight the awla right here. أَوْلَى بِكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَى فَمَنْ كُنْتُ مَوْلَى فَهَذَا عَلِيُّ الْمَوْلَى اللَّهُمَّ وَالِ مَنْ وَالَى وَعَادِ مَنْ عَادَى وَانْصُرْ مَنْ نَصَرَى وَاخْذُلْ مَنْ خَذَرَى So whoever I was his mawla, this Ali is his mawla. Allah, Ya Ali, 
Oh Allah, give success to the one who takes Ali as my successor. Oh Allah, be an enemy to the one who takes Ali as his enemy. Oh Allah, take away the one who takes Ali ibn Abi Talib from his life. Rasulullah recited these lines right then and there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the last Final closing ayah of the Holy Quran. Aliyom akmaltu lakum dinakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al Islam adina. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Today I have completed your religion and have satisfied upon you my blessings and have given you and approved to you Islam as your religion. Today your religion has been completed and perfected by the wilaya of Amir al Mu'mineen. مولى الموحدين نفس الرسول زوج البتول سيف الله المسلول أسد الله الغالب مظهر العجائب علي بن أبي طالب صلوات الله وسلامه عليه الله صلي على هيدري هيدري هيدري